Okay. So this is just the start of the display. Uh, right now I'm still doing testing on it. But yeah, this is the beginning of it. So I have some M3 screws um, that are connected to uh, these brass inserts that are set into this uh, th three f um, uh, three fourths inch uh, MDF plate that's been CNC routed. I've got pictures um, I'll post on on Twitter later on. And then I have a one eighth inch piece of masonite that has uh, I've CNC'd out. Thank you, cat. And features of this are that I've got LEDs in the corners. They're not illuminated right now, but that's what these little holes are. And then right under those holes are this capacitive touch sensor. So you can basically, uh, once I've got everything programmed, you'll be able to touch any one of the corner to you know do a game or, or change segments on the clock physically. Um, anyway, there's a large array of these screws that hold the display together. Sorry, give me one second. So here's the back of the display. We've got power that goes into the bottom and I'm using an XT30 connector that just connects right onto the bottom. And then and it's all nice and clean. I'll have to do another video to, to show the insides. But I did the original design in um, on shape, and then I exported all the uh, 2D layers um, to uh, Illustrator. I did all the type on Illustrator and verified that the words were going to work with a Google spreadsheet that just you know, basically ran through a um, whole bunch of words for the word clock. I've got NeoPixel strips on the back and. I'd open it up for you, but it takes a while to get into. Um, but I've got shorter screws on the back than the front, so I'm using some of these short M3 screws here on the back. And uh, you can see these, you can see a little bit of a shimmer from the brass inserts that are pressed in. Um, Everything that required glue, uh, I used hot glue for. Hot glue is amazing. Um, mainly because if I mess up with hot glue, I can remove it with alcohol. Um, and I don't necessarily have to soak the alcohol. But, uh, and I cut a whole bunch of holes on the back panel just in case I wanted to reinforce it like the front. And to test things on the back. Uh, also, when I build a mounting bracket so that I can mount this, I've got tons of points to to, uh, to put it, put any type of mounting system I want on. So it's a nice 3D array or a nice array of um, um, screws and everything like that. I've also got a, a light sensor up here that's got a light sensor barometer and another sensor that's connected over I square C to the um, Arduino, which sits about here. And then there's a Raspberry Pi Zero that sits here. It connects over USB OTG cable to the Arduino that's in here. The Raspberry Pi Zero has Wi-Fi. The Raspberry Pi Zero will run Node Red. So I can do a lot of IoT functionality with uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero, and then the Arduino Nano um, can uh, do all the controls. So anything that I want low level, I can do, uh, like controlling these NeoPixel strips. Um, instead of using the Raspberry Pi to do that, which sacrifices some things and adds a little bit of complexity to it, I can use the Arduino to do all that. And then the Raspberry Pi Zero to, to kind of add a, anything else I want to it, um, connecting over serial to the to the Arduino. 
Um, that also will give me the ability if I want to add like a GPS module or module to it, the uh, Arduino. I could do that potentially so that this self sets its time. Um, right now the plan is to use the Raspberry Pi Zero to, to send a timestamp to the um, Arduino and the Arduino will then know the time and then can set the uh, word clock appropriately. And with Node Red, I can do things like change the color and you know change time offsets and really any fun things I want to do, like with the touch interface, if I wanted to have it so it plays a game or something like that, I could potentially do that. Um, and anyway, so I've got um, 16 by 16 uh, NeoPixel RGBW, so it's um, RGB and then a w dedicated white LED um, for each um, you know, word. So it's, you know, 16 by 16 array of uh, these NeoPixel LEDs. So it's really easy to drive. Basically, I can drive the LEDs with one wire uh, for the NeoPixels. And that's not one wire communication, it's just the, you know, one wire for the NeoPixel communication protocol. And then I have I2C for the uh, light sensor. And then I've got digital uh, input pins for these little um, capacitive touch buttons. So it's really simple layout um, as far as you know what's what's on the clock itself. Uh, I've just got to program all the um, all the functions now. I've got all the hardware set up. I've got a little bit of testing to do. Uh, the capacitive touch seems to work pretty good. Um, the masonite and everything's working out well. The machining came out really well, and I'll hopefully uh, post another uh, video or uh, you know, pictures of that. Uh, so check my Twitter feed. I'll try to provide a link down in the video. And uh, yeah, wish me luck as I finish this out. Bye.